Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Reiterter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for tuning in to my latest video. For anyone who doesn't know who I am, I'm a UK-based consultant audiologist and clinical ear care specialist. And I'm also the founder and director of a company called Clearwax. And Clearwax are the manufacturers and developers of the wireless iClearscape device that we're using to record and perform this procedure. This patient attended with bilateral, so both ears, completely impacted soft, wet earwax. If you watched my video yesterday, um, the consistency of the wax is very similar to the patient um, whose procedure I uploaded yesterday. So it's a very wet, sticky, fudge type, clay type. There's many different adjectives you can use to describe it, but it's for me it's one of the most frustrating types of earwax because it blocks the suction probe. Uh, when you use a Jobson horn, it's it can almost spread the wax like soft butter on, on, a, on a piece of toast, it, and it, or it can dissect through um, the wax, similarly with an ear hook, and obviously with forceps, you couldn't use forceps on this because the wax is just too soft. So immediately I put some olive oil earwax drops um, in the patient's ears and I let it soak for a few minutes, and what the olive oil does, it binds the wax together, it has a binding effect. Now you can see the wax, the drops itself didn't penetrate very deep in the ear, and that's because the, the lateral bit of the earwax near the entrance is a complete seal there. So although it softened um, the outer part of the earwax, the lateral piece, um, it didn't really penetrate very deep in the ear. The, some drops did seep through, obviously, but not a lot. So I'm just persevering here now, and the, the patient's ear canal is quite twisty. Um, you can probably see that bend. If you look straight ahead, you can see the back part of the ear canal. So the ear canal uh, actually veers off to the left. So this earwax is meandering um, almost like a snake um, to the left and then back to the right again. So everyone's ear, ear canals are an S shape. You have your first bend. The first bend in the ear canal is around half a centimetre, I would say, into the ear canal. And the second bend is um, between an, a centimetre and uh, 1.5 centimetres. And the whole ear canal itself, approximately, and it does vary between gender and um, age, is approximately uh, around 2.7 to 3 centimetres. So this wax extends all the way from the entrance all the way to the eardrum. So the length of the earwax is around that, um, the same length of the, the ear canal itself. And there's two bends here. And what we're trying to do is extract and pull this wax forwards, but we can't just simply pull it forwards because it's, it's trapped uh, around the bend. So we're having to navigate the ear without obviously seeing the ear because we can't see these bends. And we, so therefore it's hard to determine how bendy each each bend is and also what's critical when you're moving a big piece of earwax is to lift the wax off the canal walls there's often a layer of dead skin keratin you can see it at the bottom here of the earwax is a glossy white thin layer of dead skin and we've gently peeled that off the ear canal which releases the wax and it allows me to extract it so bringing this wax forward, it's near the entrance now. We know we're near the entrance because you can start to see the cilia. Uh, the cilia are the hairs uh, in the ear. And the cilia are located near the entrance and almost exclusively in the outer third, uh, the cartilage portion of the earwax. It's very rare that you see cilia on the bony part of the ear canal, which is the inner two thirds. And that's because all the, the follicles um, the hair follicles are located externally on the outer third. And you can probably see that the length of this wax now, because I've, it's come, that's the distal end, that's the medial end, and I've extracted it all the way. And you can see the patient's ear anatomy, there's a bend there, it goes up and it comes back down again. So that was the patient's left ear, we're now onto the patient's right ear. I put some drops in straight away uh, before I even um, Perform the procedure because I was assuming it's just going to be like the patient's left ear. The earwax in this ear is slightly lighter in shade. It's not as um, it's not as dark as it was in the left ear. And quite often, the longer the earwax is in the ear, it, the darker it becomes. It ages. And in fact, scientists sometimes um, can estimate the age of a whale, for example 
by the colour and texture and consistency of their earwax. Um, so most mammals develop and secrete um, earwax. Uh, interestingly also, um, scientists can also decipher the migration routes of whales and their diet by examining their earwax. So that's a, uh, something we learn something new every day and I guess that's something for most people that would be new for that they've learned. Um, so I've managed to remove some of this very lateral wax near the entrance. You can see the hairs there, so again, you know kind of the suction probes near the entrance. Um, and we're just working on the wax that's a bit more medial now. And again, I'm just trying to lift this off the canal wall. Um, I think I've put some more drops in a bit later in the procedure because it was just a bit too soft and too gooey and it was, it was also lodged. As with the patient's left ear, the ear canal, um, there's also two narrowings in every, everyone's ear canal. The first narrowing, we call that the isthmus, is where the bony part of the ear canal meets the cartilage part of the ear canal. So if you remember, the outer third of the ear canal, so the ear canal approximately is three centimetres, so the outer third will be a centimetre on average, and that's the cartilage portion, and the inner two thirds, so the remaining two centimetres, is just a thin layer of skin or attached to bone. Where they meet, so a centimetre um, within the ear canal, you have a natural narrowing, that's isthmus number one. And the second isthmus is around half a centimetre away from the eardrum. And you get a narrowing there and the ear canal protrudes back outwards where the eardrum is. So the eardrum itself, the diameter is approximately um, a centimetre and the thickness of the eardrum is approximately uh, one millimetre. The eardrum itself has got three membranes. Um, and the skin that coats the outer membrane, as that sheds, like the rest of the ear canal, it naturally migrates outwards. So there's always a continuous fresh layer of skin that should be on the outer layer of the eardrum. If one perforates the eardrum, and if that eardrum heals, typically it's only the middle, le the middle membrane that reheals. So people with a perforated eardrum, if it has healed, it's sometimes hard when you examine the ear to tell whether that perforation is still perforated or if it's healed because there's a natural thinning if it, even if it has healed because you've got one in one out of three membranes that regrow and quite often as well sometimes people also develop some scar tissue as well in that middle membrane calcification we call that tympanosclerosis so someone um, suffers from trauma but the eardrum is not perforated through that trauma or if it's surgery uh, for example um, the eardrum, the middle membrane, can calcify, so you get uh, calcium deposits that develop in the middle membrane, and we call that tympanosclerosis. If that's a lot of tympanosclerosis, it does affect the mobility of the eardrum. The eardrum is not as mobile, it's become stiffer, and it, when the eardrum becomes stiffer, it reflects more low frequency sound out of the ear. So low frequency sounds hit the eardrum, and when the eardrum is stiff, it reflects it out. Um, so I've just put some more drops in there. Um, conversely, with, with a perforated eardrum, um, people generally have more of a high frequency hearing loss. So different pathologies of the ear can, uh, can, uh, can uh, affect your hearing at different frequencies. Sometimes though that tympanosclerosis, if it is quite heavy, so if the eardrum is also weighs a lot more because of the calcification, that also can uh, reflect high frequencies out of the ear. So again, the oil hopefully has just loosened where the wax has lodged into the deep, medially into the ear canal. And you can see this wax is a bit darker than the more lateral wax that we removed earlier. So we know this wax has been in the ear a lot longer because of the colour. So just near the entrance and as I said, the ear canal narrows and it widens. It, it's not just a, a cylinder of one steady diameter so this plug of wax is actually larger than the diameter of the ear canal so it's got trapped and I'm just trying to wriggle this out now whilst I'm wriggling that out it's got to answer one of the questions I received someone asked whether these instruments are reusable no they the ones I use are all single-use disposable um, you can get ear hooks, the St. Bart's ear hooks and Jobson horn, metal ones that you can sterilise. Problem with the Jobson horn is that you've got a lumen, so you've got a little hole and it's very difficult to sterilise um, instruments that have got a lumen. You have to autoclave them. Autoclave is almost steam baking them really at a very high temperature, around 137 degrees to kill any 
bacteria or fungus on there. Uh, the crocodile forceps, similarly, you, uh, mine's the ones I use are disposable to single use. You can get some that you can sterilise. Uh, I just prefer the single use ones. Uh, both eardrums are healthy, that's a close up of the wax. Someone was asking me for some close ups of the wax, so there you go. Um, I can't tell you which one's which. I think the, the largest of the right was for the left ear, the first ear, and the second piece of the left was for the right ear. Hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Um, I hope you guys are all keeping well and safe. You've probably heard in the UK we're on third lockdown, so things are not looking too great here. But I, I do seriously hope, and um, where you are in the world, everything's going well and you're all keeping well and safe. Take care, guys.